Banana Bunch, you know what time it is. It's time for another episode of the Jungle Gyms Podcast. I'm your host, Mark. Welcome to the show. We got a great episode for you, as always, here. Oh, we've already got people waving outside the booth today. It's going to be a great episode. So um, I wanted to dive in. Let's get you know a little of that clerical work out of the way. First and foremost, tickets to the Weekend of Fire are still available. It's coming up here the weekend of August 5th. Um, we're doing hot sauce samplings. There's all kinds of stuff to eat. The spicier, the better. And then there's even going to be some hot rides on Sunday. You can come out. So it's a two-day festival. Sunday is going to have a car show, too. It be really cool and guess what you can come out and hang out with us there because we'll be there for a little bit it should be a lot of fun all of those tickets are available now at junglefests.com i'm really looking forward to it this is my first week in a fire i uh i you know i've gotten to meet a lot of hot sauce people in my time here it's been really cool there's a lot of good stuff i'm even gonna try sometime in the next week um because we got invited by our friends at 50 west to come out and test this out but they have this like 1.8 million scoville spicy fried chicken sandwich i'm pretty sure our very own hot sauce mike's already tried it uh but i think i'm gonna give my uh, attempt at this i'm pretty excited about it you know i try to usually just find some other idiot to eat spicy stuff on air for me um because generally i'm not willing to put myself in harm's way for the bit that's what all of you are for i'm just here to say funny things while that's happening so uh anyway go to junglevests.com get some tickets to weekend of fire i'm sorry i sound like this i've been really sick um and that doesn't matter to you all right now. I just wanted to explain why I sounded this way instead of just wheezing into the mic uh, on and off throughout the intro of the show. This week, we're doing something fun. So coming up after this episode airs, Molly Wellman's gonna be coming out to the Eastgate location to do a signing for her brand new Cincinnati gin. So I thought, hey, I should call Molly and see if she's willing to do the show. And uh, all kidding aside, we have been orbiting each other for a long time trying to figure out when is a good time to do this. And this was perfect timing. It worked out great with our schedule. So joining me here in just a moment is Molly Wellman. She's, listen, Molly, if you don't know her, she's awesome. She's exciting. She's vibrant. She knows so much about Cincinnati history and the history of spirits and uh, spirits as an alcohol, not like a, I mean, maybe she knows about ghosts and that kind of stuff. But uh, she's an incredibly knowledgeable, probably one of the like one of my favorite people in town. She does a lot for the city, and I think it's really cool that we're getting to do this event with her. So actually, let's just dive right into this. Let me introduce you to Molly Wellman, and let's find out about her Cincinnati gin. Hi, Molly. Hi, Mark. Thank you for coming on the show. I appreciate it. You know how excited I am to be on your show? <laughs> I love this show. Yeah, I really appreciate that. It's, it was really cool, and it's been nice. I know it's one of those things. Well, we get it, because we have an insane schedules in general. Definitely. But when I saw that you were doing the event at Eastgate, I was like, this is perfect timing. Let's see if we can make this work. So, so, well, first off, why don't you tell me, well, not just tell me, I know who you are. Why don't you tell them who you are? <laughs> well, I'm Molly Woman. <laughs> um, That's a show, so, folks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I, um, I used to own a bunch of bars here in Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. And... Um, about I had seven bars within twelve years. Wow! In Cincinnati and one in Northern Kentucky. And oh, last year, which one did you have in Northern Kentucky? Oh, Kentucky Bourbon Bar. Oh, okay. Yes. That made, I kind of assumed, but I didn't want to <laughs> state in case I was wrong. It was everybody said that will never work, and now look at it. It's still, I don't own it any longer. Yeah. However, it's still winning awards left and right. Yeah. It's still a great bar. I you love built it. Built a beautiful foundation. You know, I'm, I'm very proud of that bar. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> I'm so sorry I didn't mean to jump in. I just no, didn't even realize it was. It's great. Um, but then last year, about this time, mm -hmm. uh, I decided uh, to sell the bars and uh, kind of go in my own direction and start consulting and creating um, off of my brand uh, a new business. So I've got lots of plans, but the first thing was this gin. 
Yeah. The Cincinnati gin. It's so good, too. I'm so glad you like yeah, it. Yeah, I know. And, and, well, and I, I'm, gin is one of those, I spent a decent amount of time recently at Junipers in Covington. Yeah, I love so, Junipers. And so many options. And so, yes. this was all, it was tied around, I met the guys from Dunch Provisions who yes. were doing like their pop-up kitchens. And I was like, oh, and I didn't really, you know, again, it's it just speaks to my ignorance. But I, I remember walking there, I was like, oh, there's that many different variations on this theme. Big I was so time. curious and interested about it. Yeah, And then obviously seeing what you're doing. Doing. I mean, you're just exciting. If, like, we have a lot in common in that regard. I'm like, you're very excited and fun yeah. and you're doing cool things and I love it. <laughs> it's, you know what? Anybody could do it. If you have a dream, you can do it, I you know? Agree with that. And you can't fail at being yourself. So you just have to be yourself, which is not probably the easiest thing to do. That's a I great think. bit of advice, too. I think so. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, just keep knocking on that proverbial door or wall and it's going to open eventually. Exactly. You know? Yeah, exactly. Well but I've always wanted to make this gin. Like yeah. I've always had this idea to make a gin you, or being inspired by what grows at Crone Conservatory. Cause okay. that in itself is such a gem, you know? It is such a beautiful place and yeah. it's right here in our city. It's so cool. Yeah, I feel like it's somewhat underappreciated, maybe. I, like it's like when you know you're like, yeah. this is unbelievable. But yeah. maybe this is our chance to give a little PR for the uh, for the conservatory. I'm telling you, go <clears throat> to the conservatory. Yeah, it, it really. It, I think it. it I mean, I think it costs like four bucks to get into. Yeah, it's, it's very it, affordable. It really is. Yeah, and it is just the most calm, most just. It's the perfect place to go if you're yeah. feeling stressed or if you want to take something, someone from out of town or you just need to go and have some flowers around you, sure. you know, like, or some plants around you. Yeah. It's really, really cool. Yeah, we see that fun butterfly exhibit I know yes. during the summer. And then I really They're, like their winter setup too. I do too. Yeah. They're doing a dinosaur thing now. So oh. it'd be great for the kids. Oh my gosh. Okay. You know? <laughs> it's me. It. I'm the kids. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. I know. I can't wait to see the dinosaur <laughs> thing too. I'm so excited. Oh, that's uh, awesome. But in August, on August 9th, we're going to have a big uh, party there to oh, celebrate cool. the gin. Um, well, there'll be more details on that coming up in the sure. next week or so but i'm so excited it's part of this gin wasn't just to make a gin that was for cincinnati mm -hmm. and that you know is as beautiful as cincinnati is yeah um, it was also to help promote bartenders and our amazing bars i think we have the best bartenders in the entire country hands down hands down yeah we really do. Let me ask you this. I, I don't disagree, but I'm more curious about what are some of the things that you look for in an excellent bartender? Uh, that they uh, pay attention to you, one. Um, Huge. That they, yeah, exactly. Like if you walk in and, you know, somebody says hi or they just acknowledge you, that's really important. Yeah. Uh, and then that they're like kind of open, you know, um, they tend the bar. They don't have to like know how to make every drink in the, in the sure. whole world. Um, Sometimes bars are limited, but as long as they could put a balanced drink together and, um, you know, pay attention to you as throughout, you know, yeah. if, even if they're busy, just acknowledge you here and there. I think they're fantastic. Yeah. So I agree. I've yeah. always had great experiences here. Yeah. Not that I've had bad experiences in other cities, right. but I have. I have too. Yeah, right. I'm like, <laughs> a, few, a few cities have made me feel like I wasn't cool enough to drink. Yeah, um, me too. And I'm very cool to drink. I, I agree. Mean, seriously. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, I can't imagine that. seeing you walk in and then being like, no. I <laughs> know? know, right? I know. Oh, uh, that's so funny. I love that. And yeah. that's a really noble cause too. I think that's really cool. Like, I mean, I think, and again, one of the things I feel like I uncover often in Cincinnati is there is sort of this sort. We are a bit of a hidden gem. We are a hidden gem. We have gem. a lot of really cool things. Our food scene's incredible. Exactly. Our drink scene's incredible. I mean, look, you get a place like Jungle Gems. Our grocery store. I mean, Seriously. this is like not just a grocery store. This right. is just like a mecca that everyone should come and yeah, check exactly. out. Exactly. I've been, so. been mid-pilgrimage for the last year <laughs> and a half. I love that. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> I'm sorry to keep derailing. I feel like this is the no, whole show. I'm like, great. let's just keep laughing. Yeah. I can just sit and talk to you for like ever. Like seriously. I know, right? I'm like, I, I was joking before with Lucky. I was like, uh, we were clearing space on the memory cards. And I was, I was like, eh, let's make sure I got a little extra space in there just yeah. in case. You never know. Me and Molly are talkers. Um, no, to get back to the gym though. So, you know, yeah. you had all these causes. And then, so you were you you were using inspiration from the what they were growing at the conservatory? Yes. Like, I, I just... I, you know, we went on a tour and, you know, I've been a crone, I'm born and raised here. Right. So I've been a crone hundreds of times yeah. and 
the like we got a tour from Mark House, who's the director of the Crone Conservatory, and he's the nicest man on two legs. I mean, seriously, the kind, he is so knowledgeable about every single plant that yeah. grows in that conservatory. So we uh, set up a tour with him. Um, and we're like, we just want to look at the plants that are not poisonous right? <laughs> and, you know, told him what we were doing. And we just, it was like, I've been, it was like going to the Crone Conservatory for the first time, like just being able to, uh, he was picking out like, uh, the ginger. He showed us a tree that only grows in Crone Conservatory. And unfortunately the fruit, um, it, I can't remember the name of the tree. I wish I could, but the fruit only is right for just a very small amount of time. So it's nothing that could be shipped, you sure. know? So it's, it's, it was really special to see that. Um, he, he pointed out like the chocolate, uh, plant, you know, with oh, the cool. big pods. Yeah. And then we went back to like where the, um, orchids are and everything. Mm -hmm. And that's, they have all this vanilla growing back there. It's really cool. Now, when you go to the Crone Conservatory, do not pick anything from the Crone Conservatory. <laughs> You'll be thrown out. We definitely did not put, we have never picked, we let Mark, he picked off leaves for us to smell and stuff, but right. that was because it's Mark, right. you know? Yeah. But Leave it to the professionals. Exactly. You do not touch the plants at Crone. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, smelling different things and it, it was at a time where nothing was ripe or anything, but it was just so exciting. There were so many possibilities yeah. of botanicals to use in this gin. And uh, Josh Quaterbaum, he's mm -hmm. the master distiller over there at Northern Row. Okay. And he's an amazing distiller. That man should be winning awards left and right. I am just blown away on how smooth his spirits are. Wow. I mean, it's really incredible. Like, it, they, they put some bourbon away as well, and they put some um, peach brandy away as well. Ooh, which That sounds we'll, good. We'll yeah. get back to that in a okay. minute because I'm really excited <laughs> about that. But um, he didn't even like gin, you know? And in, yeah. he, I was like, I want you to make his gin, you know? <laughs> and he went through. He picked out all these different botanicals from what we saw. We took notes mm -hmm. and everything and pictures. And he distilled all of them on a tiny little still and tried them all and then started blending them together and then... He'd call me down and I'd try, you know, until he came up with the seven that would go together. And it just blew, it's blown my mind. Every time I drink it, it blows my mind. That's so cool. I love it. <laughs> and I'm so glad everybody else likes it too. Yeah, that's, that's got to be, so, I mean, the response to this has been wild. It's, it's been awesome. You know, so there's a woman, she owns the 5050 Gin Club in Cincinnati, which okay. is um, right in a homemaker's okay. on Walnut oh, yeah. and 13th. And uh, Julia. Julia has a taste for gin like no other person. And when I first got that first sim finished sample, yeah. I ran down to <laughs> homemakers and I was like, Julia, try this. Cause if you like it, that means everybody's gonna like it. Right. And she loved it. I was so happy. It just oh, meant so the cool. world that, you know, she has such a, a great palate. So yeah. it meant the world she liked it. and. Yeah, they carry it at home at 50-50. So cool. I'm so, so now excited. another excellent spot to go visit too, yes, right? Yes. Oh, that's it's awesome. so cool. Yeah. You know, one of the things I wanted to ask, what was what's the why? Well, like why did you choose gin as the spirit of choice? You know, a lot of people ask me that, and it makes sense because I'm mostly a bourbon girl. Right. But Mark, it takes like six years to get a really good aged bourbon. Right. And I didn't have time for that. Yeah. So I love bourbon. I love, I've been blending bourbon with Wensoul over in Covington, mm -hmm. which so much fun. That's yeah. another thing everybody should do. Cool. Um, but I, I maybe at one point I'll start on a bourbon, but I really wanted something fresh and I've had this gin idea forever. Cool. So it's been something that's in my head. I just need to find the right Cincinnati based distillery to do it who made really good good products and who yeah. i who loved history as much as i do cincinnati as much as i do so your knowledge of the city is i often am not i mean blown away is i think is an understatement but i think <laughs> one of my favorite things about us becoming better friends pardon me has been watching just reading your post and you'll tell you like Thank hey you. look at this picture so in 1817 <laughs> blah 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 and then i'm sitting That's there exactly how and I i'm too. enthralled i mean Thank every you. time it's so one of the things i kept kicking around do you have a favorite cincinnati historical factoid oh, shoot or That's maybe just any really factoid hard. that comes to the top well, of head there's one okay so it's funny that you i'm, I'm writing a book right now i'm, I'm almost finished with it oh, which this is jungle gyms exclusive it is an exclusive <laughs> 
<laughs> but it's a cocktail book and the Cincinnati story. So I believe you have to have a cocktail to listen to a story. You yeah. know, so I'm going to provide you a recipe with a cocktail, and then I want you to read these stories there because there are history. You yeah. know, so I have many of them. But there was this. There's one story in particular. I just am so inspired by. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a woman named Cora Dow who used to okay. live here in Cincinnati, yeah. and she um, by herself. This is like this is like the. Eight, or the turn of the century, 1900, okay. Yeah. okay? She put herself through pharmaceutical school. She was one of two women in pharmaceutical school. Pharmaceutical school oh my gosh, can't say that I word. Know, right. Pharmaceutical <laughs> school, the Cincinnati Pharmaceutical School, uh, which is turned into UC. Okay. And um, this was the late 1800s. And then she took over her father's uh uh, pharmacy or you know drugstore which was really small and then she started opening her own and she did this all by herself a woman in the turn of the century right. you know unheard of unheard of yeah she also was married she was married to a confectioner but she never took his last name and that oh. was unheard of as well yeah. but she changed the game game she opened 11 drugstores throughout wow. cincinnati and ran them all pretty much herself i mean she had managers and stuff sure but the thing about it is she paid black people and women, the same uh, fair wage yeah. as, as men. And she, she believed in e uh, equal pay for equal work, you know? Yeah. Uh, she uh, set her own prices, which was unheard of, and it got a lot of people super mad. Um, she was really into animals. She believed all the horses in Cincinnati should have a two week vacation every year. <laughs> just like, like, just like people, That's, you know? I love that though. She well, was, especially at that time when we were using oh, yeah. them all the That's time. That's the only right. thing we had. But she was one of the first to uh, incorporate uh, trucks into her business and no i mean she was a mogul and then when she passed away she passed away from tuberculosis unfortunately uh she left over she was really into opera she was really into the symphony she left over seven hundred thousand wow. dollars as in a trust for the cincinnati symphony that we still use today she's i think one of the big reasons why we have the symphony today that makes sense though too yeah. because i feel like that's becoming less and less common in other cities too it's so true it's amazing i love a pioneer yeah. story like that too and i'm so glad yeah. she existed so she could like effectively also create that foundation for more good things in the future exactly that's beautiful so she's one of my favorite people i think in history in that's cincinnati amazing. yeah see i love that so much i'm thinking back yeah. to when i saw you at mercantile library a few months ago yeah. with dean and everybody from the uh, observatory what a, like, you make a great point. I'm loving this. Like you do need a cocktail with a good story. Yes, you do. I wish I brought. I, I wasn't sure if I should bring my gin in since you guys sell alcohol. I thought that would be against the law. I don't know if it, I, I actually think I, I. My understanding is I think I'm like annexed, oh. so I think I can do whatever we want. Well, here. shoot. Next, next time, time, yeah. No, I'll no. bring a whole cocktail. What well, does they have all cocktails? Yeah, I was gonna say. So let's maybe this is a good time to plug it because yeah. it, even though we're not trying them today, you'll be doing a tasting over Eastgate. Now, well, the week of the show. Yes. So it'll be. Um, uh, July 21st. I'll be there from five to seven. And as long as we have more, you know, as long as we don't run out of bottles, I'll stay until we run out of bottles. Yeah. Uh, but I'm really excited. You buy a, a bottle of, of Cincinnati gin. It's just around 30 bucks. You yeah. know, it's really not that expensive. So I'll sign them all with my pink pen. Oh, awesome. Hell yeah. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> And then you'll have a signed bottle. Oh, so I've, I've been wanting to do this because there's a lot of people who are like, can I get my bottle signed? Can I yeah. get my bottle signed? And so I really, and I love Jungle Gems. Oh, thank I've, you. I've done signing. We love you back. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so that means a lot, actually. <laughs> it really does. No, I was so excited when I saw this coming up and then I had a couple of people reach out. They're like, do you, do you have Molly's contact? And I was like, I do, actually. Let me yes. make sure it's okay that I don't, that I spread this around. No, it's but totally fine. I, I, I appreciate it, for if sure. If you want to contact me pretty much, much everyone in the city has my phone number yeah, somewhere. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Different than mine. I just keep writing mine in the bathroom places right? and hoping for the best. I was like, is this going to get me work? Uh, <laughs> uh, but I heard a rumor too that you're thinking about also doing one at Fairfield at some point as well. I, I so, want to, yeah. So we'll so rerun this at, when that gets close. That sounds like fun. And maybe we'll just make, that's when we'll make the drink. We'll come back and be like, okay, let's make something. I can come to you that time. Oh my gosh. you. We should go around the market and find different things and make a cocktail for with Jungle Jim's things. That would be awesome. So then, all right, that's happening. That's all our right, second episode. Done. And I figured this would be a fun way to start and just go through it and like talk a little bit about the gin and your history and all that fun stuff. Um, are you just, you know, with the tasting, are you making a cocktail uh, or are you so just, no. just, yeah. I'm just here to Is sign. it just signing? Yeah, it's just signing. Oh, my apologies for no. poor wording. Oh no, it's okay. If I, it would be too hard for me to make a cocktail. I've kind of because assumed. I, everybody wanted me to sign and then they'll be waiting for a cocktail right, exactly. and I'm just one girl You're with right. two hands. So <laughs> it would be impossible. 
<laughs> I tried that once. It did not work oh, out yeah, well. I can't, can't even imagine. It's just like constant. And then like people are like, well, what's in it? And then you're, yeah, that's then like a whole wanna, separate and, story. And everybody wants to talk about different things. Or, yeah. And I love hearing people's stories. Of course. You know, or like as people have been buying the gin, they'll be like, I'm going to buy another one for my friend who lives here. And they tell me the whole story. And I love that. I love having that connection. I yeah. think it's just so cool. And I really hope like if they send it to somebody else outside of, you know, Cincinnati, it's just, they have a piece of Cincinnati with them. And that's really special. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. That's, a, I love that so much. You know, and look, I'm not from here originally. Right. So I don't have quite the same tie that so many people do, but I've been here long enough that like I'd, I'm part of the club. Right. I'd you know, say you love Cincinnati yeah, pretty much. But I, I do. think you're a Cincinnati. I really, I really <laughs> do. And I think that's such a, I love what you're doing because you're just putting a bright spotlight on the city and what we offer and what we can do. You're fun about, again, I hate to use all these like simple, maybe <laughs> no, trite expressions, but it's so, it's so nice. much fun. And yeah, no, I really appreciate that about you. I, it, it gets me excited because I don't think enough it inspires me to try to do the same thing, right? Like, what is that thing that I can help do to really be like, hey, this is a cool, special place, you know? Yes. And you get a little piece of the history, too. I, I, that's That's been my whole thing. Like, I love being a Cincinnatian, yeah. and I love this city so much. I want the whole world to know about it. Yeah. I really do. I want... Um, people to just be so interested in. I mean, there's so much attraction. I mean, Jungle Gyms is one of them. Yeah. I, I was just talking to a friend of mine from Seattle who's coming in and she's never been here before. You know, there's so many people who are like, Cincinnati, whatever. Right. No, she's, I, I'm <laughs> taking her here to Jungle Gyms. I'm taking her all over the city. That's so cool. Uh, to show her how special it is. I'm like, you're gonna wanna move here. Right. You know? Oh yeah. So it's yeah. it's funny for me too because I have been on that you know for a long time just for my career really where right. I was like I got to go somewhere else just to see what to do right and then every time I'd get I was like all right bags are packed I some <laughs> awesome opportunity would crop up it's all the way up until this here. one I mean literally it was like middle of 2020 I had just booked this Pepsi ad I'm like all right I gotta go right and then a week later jungle and then I was like okay I guess I'm not going and, and I by the way I'm very happy about this oh gosh no but I'm it is sort of funny to see and so now I'm really like I'm I'm invested in the town and the success of all of us yeah you, you know? are you are a big part of Cincinnati too yeah, well, I love watching all your TikToks and I love <laughs> watching your videos and oh. I love this podcast well thank too. you I appreciate that too it, it means a lot it really does you are a big part of Cincinnati it's wild to think I think because I don't view myself that way I'm just trying not to at least I'm just like I'm just a guy I just have a cool job I'm just getting paid to eat and tell you if it's good <laughs> we need that are you kidding me we need that that it's is so the cool. world we live in i think about it all the time i was like does this make me technically an influencer am i too old you for that are. Now, right? no right? you're not we you're all not. are right yes, i mean we're exactly. out here we're pioneers of culture that's what we're trying to do there's a lot I'm of just pioneering trying, i'm just trying to like let everybody know the past and then also oh god i thought that was my dad for a minute Hi, it could be Hi. i know hey. it's not though no, 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 well, this is my favorite part of doing the show though is like all the time about that well people i and i uh, will often also broadcast what we're talking about in the store oh, in this area cool. so you can kind of hear what we're doing too so yeah thanks for coming in sir but i love it like people are always watching well we put I the first class it. seats out front yeah i think this is great like yeah. i love seeing all the people here i mean it's packed here today it's crazy isn't yeah it? it is it's been like december and july <laughs> it's so cool. this is the new christmas of july <laughs> i don't know what's going on I'm, i have to assume it's that um what is it that they just opened in hamilton as well uh, spooky Nook or whatever it is. Oh yeah, There's I heard been about so that. much traffic going in there, so that it's been insanely busy. I mean, I'm happy about it. I'm like, yeah. please come shop here. Keep Definitely. me employed. You know, if I'm up here because I live down in Clifton, but yeah. if I'm up here, I'm stopping at Jungle Gyms. Yeah. There's, I always do. So yeah. I'm like, I can confirm. Right We've got the Facebook photos to prove it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we've gone gin. What are, yes. what, what are some other alleys that you think you might explore? So I have some uh, other ideas up my sleeve for this next uh, year. Yeah. The book, I think, is really the big one. I think the book's like, going to be so cool. I'm so excited. The, the problem is, I, I, you know what? I don't want to limit. I don't think I have to. I'm going to just tell as many stories as I can. Do it. You know? Um, but... Because I have I have so many cocktails. Over 15 years of doing classic and craft cocktails. Yeah. I have hundreds of cocktails to like share with everyone. Um, now, the, I have all the stories. Most of them are written. But I have yeah. a few more that I have to type up. And I'm a so terrible cool. typer. If anybody's read my thing, they're like, I run into people and they're like, Molly, you have to do something about the grammar and the punctuation. I'm like, 
I'm 50 years old. I'm not doing anything about yeah, that. You're like, no, I no. I was like, I figured I found out, I found a, some AI who can help me with that. And, and I, honestly, they work surprisingly well. I know. I was like, oh, this is what I've always been waiting for. Yeah. It's like having your own editor, but much more affordable. Oh, heck yeah. And I I'm know. sorry to the people who wanted the gig, but like. I know. I mean, it's working for me. And there's people who like, you know, I'm dyslexic. I have a hard time with course, that. Yeah. I'm not apologizing for it. You don't need to. Yeah. You're in a, you're in a safe space here for this too. You are such a wealth of knowledge too. Thank you. Where I mean, it, seriously, Molly, it's always, I am always beyond impressed. And it's one of those that I was like, and it's inspired me again to learn a little bit more about the history of Cincinnati yeah. here and there, you know? It, it, you know what? The thing about, there's a lot of people who, who are like, who cares about history, Right. Or they like glaze over if uh, you know telling a story, sure. and that's fine. There's a lot of people who are like that, but when you kind of grasp on it, you kind of know where things, how things were built, or how things, the people who were here who built part of our city. Yeah, it just changes the whole um, view of our city. It's it changes the whole way that you interact sometimes with it. Like you have a better understanding of why. Sure. You know, and I think that's so important. It's important to know the past. So you can make better decisions in the present to have a better future, you know? Beautifully said, yeah. Thank you. It's like a really nice way of, yeah, just helping you navigate through existence anyway. Yeah, it really is. You know, and I and I, you make a great point too about like, I get it, it might not be your first cup of tea as far as like right. wanting to learn, but it is helpful. I think it's good to know some of that stuff so you know where we're going. Exactly. You know, it does repeat itself occasionally. It does. Just in themes. It's like a remake it, of a movie, it, right? It really does. Like we've seen things before, you know? Right. But like, it's crazy if you learn history, sometimes you can prevent that, yeah. you know, like bad things that happen. Right, exactly. Like, you're like, ooh, this yeah. didn't go so well the first time. Maybe right. we tweak this out in the revision. Maybe read all about that and what <laughs> happened and what they did wrong. And then if you need to do it, change it up a little right. bit. Absolutely. So it goes right you know oh, that's so amazing yeah you're so cool i'm so <laughs> glad you came in and did this i was like oh this will be fun today oh my gosh i'm so looking forward to the the signings too that's gonna be I great too i yeah. i love it because i get to meet so many people yeah. like i said and uh and then bringing a little i this gin is i it's so cool because it is a little bit of cincinnati yeah. you know that you could actually inter, you know partake in and it's i know there's a lot of people out there who are like ooh, gin i can't drink gin this gin is completely different. And as you know, from yep. going to Juniper's, right. um, and if you taste some of their gin flights, you'll know every gin is different. It I all, was so blown away by this. Yeah, it doesn't all taste like Christmas trees. Right. You know, there's like, <laughs> there's tons of the different ones out there. And this one with, you know, our, I'll tell you the botanical blend, it's uh, juniper. Of course, you have to have juniper right. in it. But, you know, those little juniper berries, they're not even berries, they're little pine cones, mm -hmm. right? And they grow all over there, all over Ohio and Cincinnati. Yeah. You know, you can, you can see them everywhere. Anyway, um, they have are packed with so much flavor, right? But what the other ingredients, the other botanicals that you put with it mm -hmm. will define what you're bringing out in that in that little berry. Sure. So you have juniper, we have ginger. Okay. We have mandarin and orange peel. We have cocoa nib and vanilla to like yeah. round, it, round out, it out. Yeah, a you little know? balance, sure. Yeah. And then there's uh, kefir lime leaf and then uh, bay leaf. And then there's cinnamon. And all that together is this gorgeous, yeah. gorgeous profile. So It almost tasted like a little explosive, for lack of a better way to describe it, where it was like clean and smooth. Yes. But the way now knowing what the specific flavors in there, I know when I retaste it, I'm going to be like, okay, okay, I'm getting those notes, you yeah. know? Yeah, because you have like some of the bright citrus notes, yeah. but you do have that kind of smooth, rounded thing from what I'm guessing now are the cocoa nibs and the, uh, the vanilla. Uh, the vanilla. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is. I mean, Josh Quarterbaum came up with this, you know, blend and... He's amazing. First of all, uh, the way he distills, it is so clean. It really is. It doesn't like hit you with a bunch of ethanol, which right. is really nice. Or, you know, that gasoline kind exactly. of right. flavor that you get off of some stuff. <laughs> uh, I hate that. I'm like, immediately, no. Right. No. But with this, it's so clean. And then it's just all these really bright flavors. And all those together, they're kind of covering up that Christmas tree piney taste sure. of that juniper. And they're, they're really bringing out these bright flavors. That's brilliant. Isn't that cool? Yeah. I, I mean, it's mad. It's like painting a picture with flavor. And it's really, and using the juniper as your main, you know, sure. hue. 
That's so, so cool. Isn't that cool? How many, uh, how many, like, what was the tasting process like as far as you like getting this going? Like, you know, how many so, revisions did you go through? Oh, a ton. Like, first of all, it took us like a year and a half to like, for it to come to fruition. Mm -hmm. And, um, it, you know, everyone's so luckily the distillery is right down, you know, it's a hop, skip and a jump. It's like literally right. a minute from my house. Perfect. So, um, they would, they would either set aside sample bottles for me to try, or I would pop in there for meetings about it. And we would just start trying and going through all of them. And at the very end, he's like, now we got to figure out the proof. You know, are we going to do 100 proof? Or are we going to do 80 proof? We're going to 90 proof. So we went with 90 proof and it's it was perfect that way. Yeah. So a little heat, a little sweet. I'm mm -hmm. into it. <laughs> I drink it on the rocks. That's what I've been drinking. Oh, yeah. It's great. And I don't know this for everybody, but I notice when I drink, if I tend to have a little too many, if I'm talking and I'm like, oh, I just drank half a bottle. <laughs> Damn it. Um, I'll, I don't have a hangover the next day. Oh. I know. And I don't know if that's for everybody, but for me. <laughs> yeah, like, but it's been a good run in that regard. I, yay. <laughs> you know, I sometimes, I think about that sometimes. You know, if I drink too many cocktails and if I, okay. if I don't respect bourbon, it does not respect <laughs> me the next day. Oh man, I've had, we've had some fights, you know? <laughs> However, uh, <laughs> like if I drink tequila, I'm fine. You know, yeah. just tequila on the rocks or with soda and gin. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I drink gin martinis all the time and I, fine you yeah. know but there are some people out there that i've talked to they're like if i drink gin i will punch you in the face right. and i was like well i always tell them like i'm tough enough and i'll punch you back but i don't want to see that right so we're not going to drink gin to, we're not yeah. going to have you drink gin <laughs> and there's just some people like that there's certain yeah. things that i can't drink either like i'll end up taking my shirt off and dancing at the bar so yeah. i don't do that i just know? do that sober which <laughs> is so it's like the, st the stages are weird i always <laughs> tequila is the one that always came up in conversations <laughs> like that and i always wondered i was like what is it that does that to some people but i haven't found a substance in particular that makes me act one way. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's like, oh, if I have vodka tonight, it's, you know it's what I mean? It's over. Mark's yeah. getting in a fight with a bus driver. Right. Like, why? I love public transportation, you know? <laughs> know. <laughs> like, of all the people. It's just like that. There's some people, their chemistry just, it makes us uh, switch flip. And, yeah. You know, they're not themselves. It's exciting. It's a little exciting, honestly, when you meet, especially if it's like a fun one, you know? If it's a fun one, yes, but I've run into too many with all these bars. Where I'm, I'm like, sure. I saw, I could see, I saw the switch flip. I saw it and, and like, that uh -oh. person needs to go home right, right. now, you know? Yeah, you're like, uh, <laughs> swipe the card, and get him out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm like, let's get you an Uber. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh my gosh. You know what's really crazy? Thing? I guess we had taxis, but they weren't prevalent like they are. Like yeah. Ubers now seem so ubiquitous. Oh, I know. But I always think about that way back when where I was like, I relied on so many people to get me home. Oh, same. Whereas now I'm just like, I got a nap. It's fine. I know. You know. I don't know how we did half the things we did. I mean, we had, like, we didn't have phones with us. Right. And we managed to crazy, hang that's out. That's crazy thing about, right? I know. Like, we had to make all our plans before going out. And then we had to either look in the back of the phone book at the map. <laughs> to figure out yeah. where we were going oh. and we didn't have printers to print that off I was we just say, had to like go through the map and, and with a magnifying glass like oh, okay then you turn here and then you turn here and you figured out your route oh for sure and wrote it down when MapQuest <laughs> first blew up and i was like yeah. oh my gosh i can print directions right that was like blew my mind it's same oh i was gosh. like this is crazy yeah and when i was in you college know? i took a job selling cell phones and that was like right around the time gps was starting to become popular on yes. the devices and I just remember thinking this was like the craziest thing ever. I was like, oh, you mean I can replace the, what was it, the Garmin? Right. That was like, Garmin, that felt like such right. a, like a thing of the. <laughs> the Garmin. <laughs> it was like, you oh, knew you'd man. made it if you had a Garmin it's in the car. So You're like, true. I know where I'm going now. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're like, oh, they got a Garmin. They're fancy and rich. Right. Oh, exactly. <laughs> like one day we're going to know where we're going. Now yeah. everybody knows. So, I know. I still, even though I know how to get places, I still put the GP or I, you know, yeah. the maps on so I can see if there's traffic or not. <laughs> that is me to a T every yeah, day. One yeah. of the best things on the phone now, it does, it tracks my time to home and time and time yeah. to work every day. I love that so much. And you I never do know. too. And today I, like I was disappointed. I, I try to, I try to beat it every time. <laughs> Are you pretty successful? I, so I got here three minutes before I thought I was. That's amazing. I know. I, I'll take it. I know. <laughs> Today I knew I was in for trouble. I'm leaving work, and it was like one of those rare, one of those rare days where I'm like early, and I get on the phone. And I'm like, 
and it's like 15 minutes longer than usual. I was like, what could happen? Oh. And I set my schedule in such a way that I miss all of the rush hour traffic. Yeah. When I started, because I live in Covington. Okay, cool. And when I started, the Brent Spence was closed. So I was just like, oh, I'm not man. dealing with the double whammy of both the bridge being closed and the traffic at that time of day. No. So I can't, I show up. I mean, I start here pretty late in the day and yeah. it always cracks me up where I'm like on a day like that. I'm like, why is there traffic on the highway at 945 in the morning right. in Cincinnati? Yeah. But it's usually just a wreck or something. I right? know. But. It is. I mean, we are, we are lucky though, because there could be worse. I oh, mean, yeah. there's cities that are just like. <laughs> Anytime oh I visit God. family in LA, I'm just like, yes, oh, LA. So you all are miserable, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no doubt. I uh, I can't. I can only spend three days in L.A. Yeah. And New York, too. I can't yeah. spend more than that in New York either. Yeah. We're just, we're just that kind of people. No, I totally get it, too. Yeah. And it's like it's funny because we spent so much time there in my youth since we lived up that way. And yeah. like, it's funny now that I'm like, I don't think I have the talents for it. You know, no. I don't know if it's age or if it's time or what, what one of those things. But I don't know. I mean, I love the energy. It's like I, I'm always torn because I'm like, I love the energy of this big city. And yeah. I'm like, remind I'm like, this is where you came from, Mark. Right. Absorb it. Yes. And then afterwards, I'm like, you know what? I just want a slice of pizza and to sit in my room. Can yes. you please leave me alone? I don't get want to see me. another human ever again. Yes, get me out of yeah. here. <laughs> On the same way, I'm like, I just want to go back to Cincinnati. Yeah, it's I the, love it there. It's so, I mean, again, not to keep tooting our own horn, but it really is. What, one of those things that's always been nice to me about Cincinnati is you have like enough big city appeal, right? Yep. You have a lot of like, exactly. there's culture and things that you would not necessarily expect from a Midwest, at least yes. historically. Um, it's true. But, but like, you know, we are kind of doing i knew things had changed when like two or three years ago teen people magazine named <gasps> covington as like a best spring break spot and i was you're like you're kidding me I, it was the funniest article i've ever read that's amazing and at first i was like oh the world's gone crazy yeah and then i and then i thought about it for a second i was like you know what though no it's, it's affordable to come here. It is. Especially when you're young. Like, it would have been way more affordable to come here than anywhere else. Right. Great food. Great alcohol. I mean, alcohol. Exactly. Spirits. Beer. I mean, we have everything. so many birds. Everything. You know? Yes. It's awesome. And of I, course, you know, Jungle, jungle Gyms. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a constant show plug. <laughs> I just love it. It's, it's, um, you know what I love about it, too, is like, you know, we have all the arts. Yeah. All of them. And they're approachable for everyone. No matter what your budget, yeah. you can figure out you can figure out how to go see the opera. It's absolutely you know? true. Yeah. You could go see the ballet. You could see all the Broadway shows. Right. You know? It's it's really approachable. Yeah. Are art museums free? It's insane to think I mean, about. I, I don't think that's the case anywhere else in the, in the world, probably. I don't think so either. Yeah. And like look at our history museum. It's amazing. It's beautiful. Yeah. I know. So we have all of our arts are approaching. And hell, even just the Union Terminal building itself. Yes. You know what I mean? You're like going there, you're like, this is a huge part of history where exactly. buildings like that just don't exist anymore. You I know? know. I love it. I could see um, part of it from my house. And oh, I'm really? like, it, cool. you know, yeah. it's like the Hall of Justice. Yeah. You know, it's so cool. <laughs> I'd always heard rumors that they used it as an inspiration. I was like, that's I think so they cool. did. Yeah, I'm that's pretty sure they did. Yeah, they're like, you should write about that. You should. No. Yeah. Well, if you need anybody in an ill fitting superhero costume, I know awesome. a guy. <laughs> Um, all right, Mark, you're hired. <laughs> That's amazing. I love it. Well, Molly, this has been so cool. I'm yeah. so appreciative of your time. Thank you so much. Oh, I'm looking oh. forward. We're going to definitely make some cocktails together here in the future. Definitely. I think that's the move. You call me. I'm gonna. I'll come up with some Cincinnati gin. Yeah. And we'll walk around the market and we'll pick up everything we need and we'll some amazing cocktails. That sounds really cool. And well, I'll share the recipe with everybody so they can come here and get the ingredients too. Oh, that'd be very cool. Thank yeah. you so much, Molly. I appreciate that. Uh, and I should ask you in the meantime. Obviously, you know, I know you're selling your gin here. Yep. Uh, where else can people find it if they don't want to come to Jungle Gins so or if they're not in the area? There's a uh, uh, quite a few Krogers throughout the Cincinnati area, mm -hmm. West Side, East Side, uh, in the middle. Okay. Um, there are several state liquor stores as well okay. that have it uh, right now i think we're sold out again and i'm not sorry <laughs> no don't be sorry that's awesome <laughs> because we put like uh, the state is a control state so we have to send um you know cases up to columbus yeah. right and then they distribute throughout the state stores so we're putting a hundred more in uh this coming week so we'll have some more in cool. the stores coming up um but josh quarterbomb he is just night and day Making Cincinnati gin. That's all it. he's doing. I love it. It's crazy. He makes beer too. So oh, awesome. In between the and Cincinnati that, You said gin. it was Northern Row, right? Yeah. Yes, I need to spend some more time over there. Oh, it's really cool. Yeah, that's awesome. I, you know, I went on Sunday. Yeah. I had the best. I ended up staying there for like four hours. I met so many wonderful people. Cool. I mean, it was just so much fun. Watching the Reds win again. Yep. Awesome. So it was nice. so good. I feel like we're in a real renaissance here with like, you know, I'm not yes. even a big sports guy, but I'm like, 
it is even as someone who doesn't follow, I'm like, it, the energy is so palpable. I love it. I went downtown that night that Taylor Swift was here. Yeah, And I was doing this do. thing at Ruby's. And like, yeah. I'm sitting there just going like, this is the energy I've always wanted to feel in the city. And exactly. it was just people everywhere. Everyone was like excited about oh, stuff. The Reds were was, killing it that night yes. too. I mean, And then FC as well. Yeah. FC was going on. That was an incredible weekend. I loved to take it. I came back with bracelets up to here. <laughs> my whole hand was losing circulation. I was like, oh my gosh, I don't even know what happened. But I was, I have all these bracelets. But you had fun <laughs> doing it, right? It was a blast. I met so many people and everybody was so excited for Taylor. Yeah, it's nice. It was just a great, Weekend. Yeah, I'm hoping that that kind of thing happens more frequently now. I think we're Same. on the upswing right now. I think so too. I, I kind of blame the, the Bengals. Are really were a really huge. I feel like that was like I a big so first too. swing for us. Or it was like, oh, yeah. we're on the national scale now, right? Yes, we are. We should have always been. But. I know. And now our Reds are. Yeah. So we have it's summer amazing. and winter covered. So yeah. <laughs> now I just have to find fill my fall void a little bit. But I guess we get exactly. the, the football kick up then. Yeah. You see, this is again speaking yeah. to my. This show is really just about my ignorance <laughs> on everything. I'm like, yeah, whatever, whatever you guys are into. <laughs> Marvel movies, fine. Go watch them. That's cool. Uh, um, as far as updates or stuff that you're doing, what's a good way to follow you? So if you follow me on my Facebook, mm -hmm. I post a lot of my stories on there. Okay. Um, and, uh, and then keep everybody abreast on what's going on with the gin and everything. Uh, I'm starting to list where you can get them all when they get into the stores so that yeah. you can keep up to date on that. And then my Instagram as well. So Ruby, it's all Molly your... Wellman. Okay, I was gonna yeah, say, just I'm... Molly Wellman. Uh, Wellman's two L's, two N's. So. Easy enough. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Molly, congratulations on everything. And truly, I mean this very genuinely, thank you for doing everything that you do. Oh, thank and thanks you. for being so approachable and open and just... You of know, course. from the moment I met you on that Cincinnati Bell commercial yes. all those years ago, I was like, oh, she's so friendly and fun. Connecting you know? what matters. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so that good. Was great. All right. Well, I'll, that's a good ending. I'm leaving all it at right. that. <laughs> Molly, thank you so much for coming out. I cannot wait till you come back so we can make a cocktail together. We'll pick all kinds of in, in strange, insane, strange things here at the jungle that we can pick to put something together with. I'm curious about it, and like we talked about on the show, I am interested in learning more about gin, and hopefully you can be me, my guiding light there on that. Very cool. Well, like I said at the beginning of the episode, everyone, uh, make sure you get your tickets to Weekend of Fire. It's coming up quick. We've got a lot of other fun stuff coming up for you. The Voices of America Country Music Festival is coming up soon, and we'll be there covering that. I am still trying to design the world's largest cowboy hat. Please help me. Send me an email, podcast at junglegyms.com. It's coming up quick. It's like the week after week in a fire, so I need your help. Uh, thank you all so much for watching, as always, and I'll see you out there in the aisles. The Jungle Gyms podcast is recorded in the WJJI studio inside Jungle Gyms International Market in Fairfield, Ohio. The Jungle Gyms podcast is produced and hosted by Mark Borison.